Well, you've joined me literally on one of the windiest days in existence. I am in my comfortable clothes, we're hooking up my parents' car trailer, we're about to head out and drive. And also, fuel prices are through the roof! Obviously, when I try to go and do a really long road haul. I wonder if you can even hear me over this wind! That was too windy, so let me tell you here. I'm on a weekend long journey to pick up a baby Lotus Elise. It's not actually an Elise or even a Lotus, like hell I'd be able to afford that anyway, but it has so much in common and they're incredibly underrated. First though, I had to pick it up. It was 4,000 kilometers away. If it ran and it doesn't, the price to get it goes through the roof for this $1,150 car. So for me, it was to start out by leaving the suburbs. Well, I just got my first notification of a long haul on my phone. Yeah, this road, not that far out of the city, I now have to follow for about 300 kilometers. So, oh my God, this is a, yeah, quite a long journey. And brilliantly, as I'm heading more inland, I'm going uphill all the time, which is costing more fuel, considerably a lot more fuel, which wouldn't be that big of a problem, except we're on a very expensive weekend for fuel. It just recently went up to a dollar, I think 85 per litre. <laughs> That's a lot of money per fuel. Now I was able to get it for a dollar 75. Oh yeah, good bargain hunting here. Not only am I going uphill on a very expensive day, carrying a trailer which is very drag inducing, it's nearly doubling my fuel consumption, but I'm also traveling consistently into a very strong headwind. This is going to be a very expensive trip. So if I'm doing, which if this is abysmal right now, about 15 liters per hundred, we're just roughly estimating what we're getting going uphill then downhill then uphill then downhill, but mostly uphill and into the headwind and all that kind of garbage. At 2,000 kilometers each way, that's 4,000 kilometers, that's 14 lots of 100 to carry the 15,000. That's about, oh my God, the math is coming to me now. If I'm not mistaken, that's about 600 liters of fuel that I'm gonna be using. That doesn't seem right. But then again, let's also now times it by 1.7. That's not right. That means I'm doing about a thousand dollars in fuel. Let's hope to God my math is wrong and this is a particularly bad part of the journey of fuel consumption and it doesn't stay like that. But even still, with all of this fuel usage, which is pretty horrendous honestly and I probably shouldn't be doing it if I care about the environment in any sort of way, it would cost me probably about two and a half thousand dollars to get this from Queensland sort of Brisbane area uh, back to South Australia. But it doesn't actually run and drive at the moment. It's blown ahead gasket and apparently there's a few other little minor drives with it. So the fact that it doesn't drive means that I wouldn't be able to go with a regular carrier and I would probably have to pay somewhere in the order of twice the price to get it down there. So I'm still saving quite a lot of money. It's a lot of fuel! On the way there though, the world was determined to slow me down at all costs. Now I didn't catch the first lot of cops pulling me over for no reason, but I did catch these roadworks on camera. And then I got the next policeman that pulled me over for no reason. By the way, this cop had a really cool BMW interceptor sort of thing. Then... These fuckers are everywhere. And somehow, I stumbled upon Goat Pocalypse. I never managed to get the large horde all together in one shot, but damn, there was a lot of them. And they consistently were running across the road at the very last second. Soon though, it got dark and passing through Goat Hell became a bit dangerous. And I stopped right here. Well, I'm out in front of the stars now. So, yo, yeah. oh tent, just a blow up air mattress. And a sleeping bag that I picked up for super duper cheap. It's about 9.40 p.m. Didn't quite get the 10 hours of driving I wanted. It just got a little too sketchy with all the freaking goats everywhere. But I'm going to get some shut-eye now. And continue in the morning. Just 
hope that I make it before sundown tomorrow to where I'm going. Hopefully that, <laughs> hopefully the light wasn't just shining in the camera, but yeah, you get the idea. Okay, good night. I'm gonna watch the stars tonight. Well, I just had my first sleep out underneath the stars. Not as easy to sleep there as I thought it would be. In the middle of the night, this guy showed up with a pretty big sleeper cab, cab over sort of looking thing. And uh, after they showed up, it went from being like really humid with a nice cool wind to being a nice cool wind, but being very cold. <laughs> So, yeah, hopefully I don't get sick from just getting a cold, especially in amongst what else is happening. All right, let's head out and drive directly into the sunrise. That seems like a great idea. I'm not gonna go blind at all, am I? Well, at least the goats are asleep this early in the morning, but driving into the sunlight will always suck. At least it was very pretty, but way after morning had passed. Well, I'm quite a ways into my second day and fantastic. My exhaust fell off completely. <sighs> Luckily, technically the law states it needs to be behind the main passenger compartment of the vehicle. So I can just take that off, but it's gonna be droney and really loud. Very, very loud. <sighs> Son of a gun, now I have to touch this hot exhaust. <sighs> this was hell, but at least I was only about a hundred kilometers away from Queensland. Guys, we have finally made it to Queensland. Luckily I didn't have to go ride into Brisbane, so I picked the car up in the dark and the next day in the light, I could finally see it. Hey, what's up guys? I guess you're wondering what the baby lotus is. Well, here it is. Okay, well, all right, hold with me. If you know what this car is, give me, bear me a second. And if you don't know what this car is, this is an MGF, a small little mid-engine British car. So the length is about the same. The width is, eh, it's a little bit narrower, a little bit longer, but you generally get the idea. It's got a mid-engine, rear uh, rear-wheel drive, transverse. But now, here's where the similarities get even a little bit spookier. The Gen 1 Lotus Elise, this is exactly the same engine. It's from a Rover, I believe they call it a Metro or a Mini or something, whatever. But yeah, that's the engine that's in here, little 1.6 or something like that. It's exactly the same as a Lotus. So similar weight, similar size, though it is heavier, obviously. A little bit more understeery because they wanted the thing to be a little bit safer than a Lotus, which is a full-blown sort of near race car. And the same engine, baby Lotus. Lotus being one of my favorite car companies of all time. That's why I like this car so much because it's such a weird vehicle that they made. So basically after MG had run out of variations of the B that they could do, the MGB, and they put a V8 in that, they really had to come up with something else. And because they were partnered with Rover at the time, they took their little front wheel drive city car, and then they put the front undercarriage and all of the suspension, all of the engine and everything, and stuck it in the back. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's basically a reverse front-wheel drive car, if you understand what I mean by that. But yeah, little manual car. This thing is going to be so much fun. But as I've, uh, whether I've said it or not, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'm going to be taking the clapped-out motor because the motors in these are the weak point, apart from all the cheap plastics and everything. It, it's coming out because it's currently blown. Head gas is gone. Apparently, a whole bunch of other things should be done at the same sort of time. But yeah, we're gonna EV convert this little lightweight bad boy and it's gonna be mwah, bellissimo. Anyway, I'm gonna head back on the road and get back to South Australia. Oh, this is a long drive. Maybe? 
Well, heading back, even with that car on the back, I was now getting around 12 liters per 100 kilometers. So it really must have been a hot build the entire way. And I suppose Treebeard was right. Heading south is like going downhill. Well, I did quite well making it about 1200 kilometers, taking it easy on the transmission. Until... It's getting worse. Um, I really don't know what this is now. I don't really, like, <laughs> we have made it so far and it wasn't making any extra noise. And now, suddenly, now that I'm within, like, home stretch, like six hours to go, it's decided to throw a new sound at me. I think soon it might be time for me to go into fourth gear and just nurse at home in fourth. Going into fourth though would add hours to the journey. So what did I do? Uh, yeah, I, I went into fourth. Unfortunately, my ute doesn't have AC and it became humidly hot and the fans were hot from running the ute in fourth gear for a long time so i needed to open my window but it started to rain too so i couldn't do that this was becoming unbearable eventually though i made it home and the journey was over so that's the story of how I got my clapped out MGF. Now I've owned one of these before and that's how I know that these things are an absolute riot to drive. Lightweight, buzzy little four cylinder. It's just so good. Matched with being mid engine. Oh, it was so much fun. Especially since a lot of us will never be able to afford a mid engine car. And especially with Toyota MR2 prices going through the roof, this is the last bastion of cheap mid engine little cars that we can get. Now, on the thing of EV swapping, I had a bit of a look when I got back because I didn't want to look into prices until I actually got the car to know whether I should, uh, like, get my hopes up about an EV swap. But the last time I looked up EV prices would have been before coronavirus, and I didn't realize how much the prices have gone up. So currently, whether I fix that engine, which shouldn't be too expensive to do, or EV swap, which will still be quite expensive, but like more expensive and maybe out of my price range. So for now, subscribe if you want to see more on this car. There will be more on this car, whether I EV swap it or I fix the engine, I really am going to try to get the EV swap down. I'm gonna to try to get myself like a really cheap forklift motor. I'm gonna to try to find all the cheaper stuff on AliExpress that's in the scam company that'll take your money and then disappear sort of thing. And I think in the next video, what I'll do for you guys is I'll go over what is wrong with this absolute, as Tyler Hoovy would say, hoopty of a car. But for now, I'll catch you guys next time. Mm, goodbye, it is really hot right now.